to thread. So, okay, with that, uh, everyone, thanks for joining us today. Quick recap, we got alumni member Al Snoy with us uh, to share a little bit of his alumni story, his path as a agile coach and product manager. He's got a unique journey to share with us and he's willing to give us some time in Q&A. So with that, I'm passing the mic over to Al. Al, take it away. Thank you, everyone. I, uh, thank you for having me, MDM. I'm just making a, a mic check that everyone can hear me just fine. Thumbs up if you can. Sweet, thank you so much. Well, uh, I want to have this uh, session as interactive as possible. So feel free to ask me questions in the chat or just blurt it out um, uh, in your own discretion, right? But like, uh, I want to have this, this kind of share out um, just as uh, meaningful for you uh, so that uh, it helps maybe inspire you or give you some good takeaways on what you uh, can bring for your, your journey past the MDM uh, graduation or MDM uh, chapter, right? So uh, I'm just gonna share my screen here. Uh, where are we here? All right, everyone can see my screen just fine. Sweet, I'm gonna be sharing the, the link in a bit. Feel free to go into the Miro board. I understand that you uh, all have been using Miro already and may be familiar with it. So uh, it's open to everyone so they can come in and, and uh, browse around of what I have, right? So I, I prepared a, a poster for, for Dennis on what I think I can provide to, to the floor. And uh, I didn't really know, or get my head around of what might be useful, but I thought I might, um, I might as well just share very quickly my resume, if that helps at all, right? Uh, the, the title is, yeah, Scrum Master and Agile Coach. I can talk about that, what that means. But I think I really wanted to come uh, and offer my time just to uh, help with any of your questions and worries that you may have uh, moving on forward uh, past the MDM. I know when I was a student, that was almost 10 years ago. Well, came on as a C3 in 2009. Um, we, it was a roller coaster of emotions, uh, a lot of great stuff, uh, uh, like priceless. Uh, how do you experience that I've gotten and learnings, but also it didn't, it came with it, with its challenges. And, and I'm here to, to kind of extend as a, an alumni that uh, I know what those challenges are, even as a, as a, a visiting faculty when I came uh, almost uh, three years ago, to kind of like alleviate those pressures and give you tips on maybe how to navigate with those challenges and how I dealt with it. And hopefully that might be useful for you, right? So. I don't know if this, if this poster was, was shared at all, but I know what you have been going through. I'm here to help if, you, if, you are, if you're uh, overwhelmed and uh, if you need some friendly advice, right? Um, this whole timeline here is actually what I'm gonna be going through step by step uh, at, um, uh, through my share out. But the overall agenda that I have planned here was get to know, was it C14, Dennis? Yes, C14. Uh, share you my timeline, give you my lessons learned, like three lessons learned, and then uh, open up for Q&A, right? So uh, if that's okay, uh, if everyone who's active uh, can, again, go to the Miro board, and I just want to uh, get a quick dot vote, a show of hands in this mirror board of where they think they want to get to. So you grab a dot and just vote which one uh, you, which role uh, you think you you want to get into uh, into into the real world and jobs. If you think you have more than one, feel free. It's just kind of like a, a temperature sec or a, a sense for me to uh, what the um, overall audience is like or where they want to head. To. I'm just going to time box this uh, classically for uh, one minute and I'm going to uh, play some music. I don't know, uh, apparently it works. Do this. Load 
Oh, timer isn't really working. But keep the dance party. Do, 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 do. And let's see where we are. And stop. Cool. And actually stop. Stop. Sweet. Stop. Timer. All right. So let's see how many do we have here. We have. Oh, works fine. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay. All right. Not sure. Good. So what I can say is that hopefully my story will kind of like in um, maybe a useful reach for uh, the bulk amount of these people because I would say the, the roles that I've uh, gone through has been in each of these <laughs> sections, right? And for the most part of the common theme that I've had is that um, there's gonna be times where, uh, there were times where I really didn't know what, I, uh, what role I was in. So I can give you kind of like my, my kind of mindset of how I navigated through those confusions, right? All right, getting to know, second part of getting to know you all, right? Um, let me just refresh here and see if uh, I can get the timer to work. But for those uh, who may know some facilitation methods, um, there's the AJ and Smart, who is partnered with uh, the creator of Design Sprint, uh, Jay Knapp, who uh, shared this facilitation method to kind of like fish out what's working for uh, an audience and what's not, right? Uh, on a common let's say uh, a common goal, right? So what I have here at the very top is uh, how might we? And I thought I'd just start off with how might we succeed with flying colors after MDM? Yeah, it's kind of very broad and open um, question to you as a C14s. And what I'm fishing out in general is that you grab uh, these uh, green posties for what's really working well for you or what's exciting, what you've gotten out of MDM, right? And how you bring that forward. And then uh, the reds are kind of like worries and confusion on what's not working so well. Uh, I'd like for you to be as candid as possible because I've been through the program before. Uh, it's realistic. There's always going to be great stuff, but there's also stuff that's worrying. And I wish when I was back at uh, in your shoes, 10 years ago that I had this kind of like face-to-face -face interface or kind of like um, questions about um, uh, how to deal with, uh, with uh, kind of challenges, right? So I'm just gonna give you uh, one minute, well, two minutes, your best. Uh, my tip for you is just copy paste the blank posties uh, and then, uh, and then we'll, I'll see what I can do uh, to navigate or get a sense of, of, the, of the room, right? go let me put some 90s music here later any requests oh maybe this one let's go Yes, Dave. Oh.
openness and I'm and the more candid you are, the more open you are, the, the best I can like uh, uh, interact with you and, and give you just like my, my, my honest answer uh, past the NDM uh, journey. So uh, just orienting here, love that you guys love Agile and Scrum. That's totally my bread and butter. I'll, I'll share my, give you my two cents about, uh, about that. Uh, working with great peers, that's probably one of the core pillars of what the MDM program is about. Projects that I have done so far at TDM, yes, amazing self-learning. Two-sided coin here, too much self-learning. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, uh, try, I guess trying to find the, the right middle. Job finding, huge, right? And the IT boom due to COVID, oh yeah. So uh, this is very fresh, so I can just give you kind of like my opinion on it and, and definitely giving you uh, just the caveat that uh, it's just, I could be very biased. So uh, uh, just take it with a grain of salt. And we're becoming uh, bummed because there are no jobs. Hey, don't be worried, you'll be fine. So one of my kind of like spoilers is that everything will turn out fine, right? Uh, with the right, uh, with the right effort, with the right spirit, and the right attitude, everything will turn out just fine. All right, uh, let me turn off the, the curses here. And you can either follow me on, uh, before I start, I just wanted to thank you again for this. This is, uh, uh, I hope uh, this was useful for you. It gives you a glimpse of what my particular style is, has evolved into in, in engaging with groups. Uh, and I'll use this as a kind of like a, as a starter of a base of what I think uh, would be useful for you uh, in, in, in your shoes uh, as you get into uh, uh, finishing the MDM program. So uh, without uh, further ado, I'll just go into my, my story, uh, which will touch a lot about my, um, my background, my education, and how I got to the different roles uh, moving forward. Uh, for, so for those who know me, I uh, was born in Vienna, Austria. Uh, born and raised there, but uh, I'm not, uh, I don't look Austrian, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm Filipino descent, um, but uh, I've, I've grown there, uh, grown up there for most of my life. Uh, I've been, uh, been very uh, fortunate to go to an international school, and I think I want to do a call out here uh, that I'll, I'll be very honest that I wasn't the greatest student, uh, I was uh, under average for sure. Um, because I had different interests, right? Um, but there, there was a lot, there's a lot in, in this personal story uh, that uh, is too much out of, the, out of the scope of this, of this meet, but uh, definitely it, it felt uh, challenging for sure uh, to be in such a school that my parents uh, worked hard for where I couldn't perform. So I invested a lot of time in basketball and computers and IT. And that's what uh, really interested me. Uh, although I didn't succeed with flying colors in, colors in, in, in like this uh, foundational school, I still managed to pass, uh, thankfully. Uh, but there was a awakening call, like uh, as I finished my like exams, that I should take things more seriously. So that's where I kind of like uh, just uh, uh, try to challenge myself to say like, hey, you've you've passed. Uh, basic high school, how can I succeed moving forward? So through all the hard work in the exams, uh, I used that energy to bring to uh, my undergrad in the University of Sussex in England. And the program back then was called Multimedia Digital Systems, right? So what I had done there is the whole slate, the whole kind of like, uh, digital media uh, like spectrum, front end coding, introduction to coding, advanced uh, uh, programming, uh, digital engineering. Um, there were, what was it? Uh, video uh, editing, all that stuff. Accounting. I'm not great at accounting. I'm not great at math, but uh, I'll, I'll be open to that too. But that was uh, that really fulfilled me to say like, oh sweet, now I can do everything, right? Maybe I can do everything. No, the, the hard learning towards that journey was that although I was a late bloomer and I graduated with, with flying colors then, there was a conflict within me, I guess in the lack of better terms, 
uh, a conversation that I had with my peers, like what's better out there in the world? Is it a jack of all trades or an expert? And I think that type of topic is ongoing, right? Because if you have a jack of a trade who knows a little bit of everything, they can be approachable, they can empathize with different roles, but they're not great at something on a particular area, right? So if you ask me to, to, to code uh, in, in JavaScript again, like a, a vending machine, that feels like, oh my God, that was like uh, 15, 20 years ago. That it'll, it'll feel like, a, 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 how do you call it? Uh, a rusty skill but I knew the foundation well enough to to be able to talk to engineers uh, so um, that was interesting overall but I, I kind of took that and my I guess my my strengths were in, was in multimedia development which was web development and video production and so forth and I brought that over um, uh, a good opportunity at the UN in Vienna. So uh, I started off as an intern, became a consultant. It's like, woo, wow, Vienna, right? Like uh, amazing, uh, uh, amazing, uh, how do you call it? Uh, organization, very well known, Q, uh, uh, a lot of like high bar of professionalism, but also, uh, so to say, uh, political, layers and bureaucracy a lot of like interesting learnings there um, but uh back then you, you if you're at an office job you start like you're are you part of the big boys now or big girls now you know you want to be part, like it's an interesting uh kind of lens uh to go through but what i found interesting overall is that whilst i was uh going through that experience there was uh the the long-term plan of being at the un wasn't as enticing and my colleagues around me were telling me to to aim bigger right so um kind of like going back into uh, what i was interested about is that i think uh i was really interested to be uh to uh, be involved in animation that was it right uh, i wanted to be part of pixar i want to be in, in dreamworks i was a big collector of dvds and movies and i was trying to say like oh if i can make it to to north america and make amazing stuff uh that would be cool and then uh, i kind of searched around for a school i was like oh masters can i do a masters in, in digital media and uh, lo and behold uh, the center for digital media came up uh, there weren't many uh, schools back then and, and when I was searching around. There was one in in Maryland, I think. But uh, but this site right here was like, we want to make cool stuff. We want to make games. We want to make all these cool things. And I was like, yeah, 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 I want to do this. This, is, this might be my ticket to Pixar. <laughs> uh, but it could have been. But of course, spoiler alert, I went uh, a different route, right? But for me, back then, the Center for Digital Media was this, 2009, 20-month program. It's changed now where you're currently in a one-month, one-year uh, program. But this was a 20-month investment uh, for sure. So coming from international borders with a huge investment to this, I, uh, I was really banking on, on um, amazing successes. But I'll tell you right now that uh, it wasn't what I expected but I had faith that uh, it will work out just fine. In the end, well, I was in a camp with a lot of uh, other cohort mates and we had also similar feelings, but because we had such a good camaraderie with each other, we just like went all in and went through this together with, uh, with the MBM program. Back then, it, was, it felt a little bit more startup-y in, in a sense, right? But like we had a lot of great mentors and, and uh, support systems. We had um, a mentor from EA. We, had, uh, we still had G George Johnson. Then we also had uh, Larry Baffia uh, also back then uh, as, who started off uh, as uh, the animation elective uh, teacher and then kind of like obviously became a bigger piece uh, of MDM legacy uh, and now the director, right? Which we're really happy to see. Um, so the, 
the work that I was doing at NDM was interesting. There was a lot of, uh, uh, it's very client-based, but like just to give you a flavor of what uh, we did, uh, we did a campaign for the Olympics, the Olympics back then. Uh, uh, one of the clients that I had, that I was uh, w working for with the team was the uh, arthritis uh, association in DC. So we made them e-learning uh, module, uh, e-learning program, um, men's health initiative of BC. Um, we gave them, we made them a campaign. Uh, they wanted a video game first, but we uh, we pivoted into making a social media campaign that was presented at the Rogers Arena. That was really exciting. And uh, uh, as Back then, when Facebook had uh, social media games, we, we made a concept here for the One Drop Foundation, which is, uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, a foundation backed by Cirque du Soleil and the Gaspi Bourbien, which uh, are highly regarded in terms of um, family business and water sustainability and um, great connection here. So all in all, like without trying to get too uh, over time with this MDM was amazing. Um, yeah, that was me back then. Kind of like uh, very young, thinking I'm going. Like, I remember this. I don't know if Josh is here or, or uh, but uh, I was uh, applying for a job, uh, part time, to become a helper. And they're like, uh, you don't need uh, this uh, uh, office wear. Uh, we're all casual here. So that was kind of like uh, that was kind of fun and interesting overall. But yeah, uh, that was the, the, the C3s. We've all kind of like aged. <laughs> but uh, amazing crowd here. So uh, the main takeaways uh, that I was happy about was uh, a roller coaster of emotions. Like I said, the Olympics was great, super fun cohort. But uh, also kind of like opening up here what was going through my mind, right? Um, we worked ridiculously hard. Which has its which has its kind of like uh, rewards, right? Like you 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 get proud of the work that you've done, but sometimes you you feel overworked uh, naturally. So there's questions of was it worth it or not? I'd say yes, it was totally worth it, worth the worth the hustle, right? Um, worth making uh, uh, projects that are portfolio worthy and and use that as kind of like a tool to get employable. But was it really worth it? Uh, part of it, I was still kind of very confused of like, uh, what role am I and who, where do I fit, right? And there's just also the element of being burnt out and so forth, right? But here I am with this healthier mindset of that. Uh, and it's a, it's a call out for all of you as well as C14s is um, it will work out fine. Uh, the work will be worth it, but take the time uh, to step back, relax, take a breather, and then find your sweet spot that keeps you going. Uh, keep on digging. Kind of a spoiler alert for, for the lessons learned. So uh, past 2009, uh, there was a decision uh, on uh, past graduation where to go. So interesting uh, thought process. Uh, in the program as a, uh, itself, I, I met the love of my life right, uh, Milim Kim, right there. That's us with ears, German ears. And, uh, and, the, and the spoiler alert is that we had to make a hard decision of whether to get a job in Vancouver or find an opportunity to be in Berlin, closer to Vienna, go, uh, uh, to my family and so forth. So uh, whilst we were doing both, uh, Milim had an opportunity to, had a, uh, had a more, kind of like a, fa a faster opportunity uh, uh, built up at uh, Berlin, which he took the test for and just went for it and was offered the job. Thanks to Dennis, by the way. Dennis uh, built up that uh, connection. So with that confusion, we're like, oh, snap. Like, well, this is what we have in front of us. My mind was going through the motions. I was like, all right, I want to be, I'll, I'll go with you because I want to follow you. Yeah, you're important to me, and um, I uh, I also want to be close to my family because I miss Vienna. That's definitely has happened throughout the the, the the journey of MDM as well. 
so through twists and turns, we uh, not, not twists and turns, but like I, I, I came with her to to Berlin. Uh, we we settled in kind of like together. I was going through different jobs. Milan was still at Wuga, but then through a long-winded journey, I was still confused of where I was going to go. But like what I found out was Wuga was really embracing Agile and Scrum. So that was my that was my cornerstone. That was my anchor. So I said like, well, if that's a company that's that really embraces Agile and Scrum, let me go there and and prove my worth. I gave my whole spiel about MDM. And it worked out just fine. Uh, I'll, I'll say that it, was, it wasn't a slam dunk because I just didn't have a product management like uh, subject knowledge, right? But uh, they gave me a chance, but with, and with all kind of like the skills that I had accumulated from all the way from what you've seen from undergrad to grad, I kind of made it happen, right? So uh, uh, I was given an opportunity to do an internship. It was weird, a weird feeling too, like doing an internship again. Uh, it felt like starting from square one, but it, it gave me the push and the challenge to really prove my worth, right? Uh, like really do the work. And I, I, looking back, I would say I wouldn't do anything differently um, because uh, it gave me almost kind of like a, 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 a space to, learn uh, the, the whole product management uh, uh, responsibilities, learn through some failure and obviously being coached and managed through, through those kind of like hurdles. But really knowing from a game development perspective, what this means between UX tech and business and being in product management. So a lot of scheduling, a lot of feature development, a lot of team management. So that was, putting the whole MDM journey into real practice uh, in, a, in a space that was uh, essentially what I would value. Um, and here's to say, I'm gonna start, take a step back here. Wuga, the company that I joined in Berlin, uh, was a games company, but I came out of MDM thinking, I'm not gonna join a games company. That's not where my heart is, right? Like I wanna be maybe in web development. I wanna be in um, uh, agency work. I remember that. I, I, I remember sitting down in front of Dennis and being like, ah, I wanna be, I wanna do that. And I think now that I look back and if I were reflecting on where, where Dennis was sitting at, like obviously as mentors here, we want to empower you wherever you want to go, but like it's the world out there is also quite unpredictable, right? So I guess as mentors and support systems, we're here to say like, uh, here's what we see, here's what you, uh, here's our two cents, take it and see what you can make out of it. And um, I just went with the flow with games. It was a, a great opportunity, great uh, way to learn uh, product management get some money uh, like on the side, get a, a, some, some source of uh, uh, stable uh, salary. And the trade-off was that I, this is a trade-off, but like the gain was that I, I made amazing friends at that game company. We made really great strides at that, at, that, at that game. It was probably one of the top 10 grossing games when it first came out. Uh, but overall, it was so so pay, right? Like you have a reference of like the big tech companies. Why don't you get the big pays and so forth? Um, but I guess my two cents from that is like uh, as much as you can uh, have pay be a, a central theme for I think for a lot of us, you have to also kind of like flex the mindset of that. Don't let that drain you. It's not all about the money because uh, if you get uh, too high of a salary who's to say that you're actually happy. So that type of mindset started building up in my mind overall. But I think the Wuga uh, chapter was everything I needed to kind of like stabilize from a product management perspective, uh, really hone in on the skills from there and where I, where I really also like double down on being an agile coach and scrum master. So through them, um, I found the motivation to get the certified scrum mastering and they also covered for my uh, product ownership course. 
and they also did other things to support me like public speaking training um, which is great so kind of a cameo here through this uh, um, experience obviously we got to go to GDC meet up with old friends um, met with Dennis made contacts over here but also I, I skipped a bit on here like Booga was kind of like a, a, a nice uh, story to be part of like the MDM kind of journey because we managed to get a bunch of MDMers there uh, I want to count of maybe six to seven people and now as years have passed uh, we've gone through different uh, paths, but this was kind of like the core group in the in the very beginning. Uh, Milim, myself, and Sagar were from C3, and uh, Robin here was from C5. Uh, and I say, I think we wouldn't have been able to make it a Wuga if it wasn't for Milim, because she was uh, she was the one who uh, was our our voice and our uh, supporter. So another theme about MDM is that uh, as a little piece, like look out for each other uh, if you treasure and value hard work from from each other uh, pick them onto your team and let them be part of the journey right uh, i think that's also that might be touching on like this part here about like uh, worried about becoming a bum right like don't worry like if as long as you're as you do some uh, do some hard work, uh, be kind, enjoy the journey, make great relationships, you'll be surprised how little interactions like this can open up opportunities. Right? And it's just one way of thinking about it. All right, little story here. I was trying to get back between Berlin and Vancouver because I always wanted to uh, still work in North America, like whatever I invested into CDM. Um, I didn't have a chance to work in Vancouver. So uh, kind of like a cameo here. Throughout the years, uh, I came to visit the CDM, uh, did a facilitation, like a, uh, a, like a short six months uh, supervision, uh, like a faculty supervising gig. But Here's the thing, uh, another takeaway, which I'm gonna put here, is that um, running out of PR, permanent residence time. I'm gonna put that here. So that was my, my time box to get back to Vancouver because I spent uh, a lot of money investing to get into to Vancouver and just didn't, I, personally, I didn't feel that I, I've, um, I've gotten that, that experience to work in Vancouver yet, which I've missed out. So through this back and forth, I unfortunately ran out of uh, applying for PR time, but um, that was a huge learning, which I still wouldn't have done differently because it really put me on the spot here of like thinking um, with real world situations, very hard real world situations. But um, through this back and forth, being part of MDN, still being in touch with them, uh, reconnecting with friends here. Just, uh, I don't know if you recognize these people here, but there's, here's Ryan Klesk, uh, part of the, the home team with you guys now at CDM. A shout out to Ryan and uh, his wife, Maya. A uh, little tidbit here. Maya is from my uh, high school at Vienna International School. So another kind of call out is the, the world can be quite smaller than you think. Um, but yeah, um, over time, Milam and I got married. I don't know if you recognize this guy, but uh, he blessed us with our presence. Um, but through this back and forth, we managed to go back to Germany, had a whirlwind of, of job changes there. And to fast forward, I was uh, uh, quite candidly uh, let go uh, from Wuga. So here's a story and maybe some reality about uh, the game industry in general, right? The, the, it's, a, it's really exciting to be in games and there's a, it's, not, it's not only about games, it can be in startups as well, right? But like if, even if you do well, there's a reality where if, if uh, the business is strapped for cash, they have to let go with some people. And unfortunately I was part of it. So I was going through those emotions as well, right? And the reality is that it's not only 
small startups, not only games, it'll be big companies too. Everyone goes through this, right? So I, I really embraced that, that, hey, I'm going through this. Uh, I guess it's meant to be. My only anchor in Germany was Uga. I'm ready to go back to Vancouver. So we made the jump after being married to go to Vancouver. So here, um, we, the, my, my key to get back to Vancouver was uh, through the sponsorship through, through Millen, right? Uh, we were uh, invested in each other. We knew that we were going to go back. And through that, that was our decision uh, to come back to Vancouver together. So we got back to Vancouver, very happy, came to the new CDM and worked with a bunch of uh, uh, new students on what I could provide from, from my experience at, at WUGA. So the whole new level of uh, agile in, in the real world or the workplace, what I could bring uh, from that experience over to, to the different teams. So it felt like we were going full circle, sharing everything that I could become a coach and mentor. And that was, that was the family there, right? And back then I was still uh, in keto diet, so they gave me uh, uh, avocado, avocado for my birthday. But uh, this is a call out to the, the overall community for, uh, of MDM for, for being uh, amazing and really looking out for each other, right? So another central theme about MDM that I'm so thankful for is that I could always come back to them knowing that I've, I've done my part and I want to still contribute to the, to the, to the community, right? And they supported me and, and brought me in with open arms. So it felt like home sweet home. But uh, through several feedback, you know, you, you always get thought like, hey, try to aim bigger if you can, right? Uh, what's your long-term career? Because we, we weren't sure whether I was in the long-term picture or not, uh, unfortunately. But that's okay. Like, it's something that I, I was comfortable with and something that I had to deal with, right? And that's, that's all fine with me. But even part of that is that we started uh, building a family, right? Uh, we started uh, realizing, hey, there's something, there's a pivot in our strategy that we have to figure out. Let's expedite like uh, a long-term plan where you can <laughs> uh, not uh, at least have a, maybe a, let's say a, a long-term job, right? A full-time job. And um, so this is a picture of Milan and me with uh, finding out uh, our, our baby. And then obviously and going in 2018, Max was born. So that's our that's our baby boy. He's a he's a he's a Riley one right now. So he's he's he's, he's, he's full of energy and he's loud. Uh, but uh, hopefully you get to all see him one day. So I was uh, then uh, presented an opportunity to work for Biba. They wanted someone more full time. Uh, they had a, a great benefits package. Uh, and uh, in short, Biba is, uh, let's say, a, a game company that uses AR and tagging on physical playgrounds. So uh, the value prop there is that uh, try to get kids off the couch and into the playgrounds and using gaming elements in the mobile phone to interact with swings, uh, slides, and so forth. That was, that was really cool. The concept was amazing. Um, I, I'm very happy to have been part of uh, this group. It was a lot of great work. I got to work with uh, great uh, IPs, right? Uh, there was uh, uh, Hotel Transylvania and Teletubbies. And we got to work, uh, yeah. And Biba was actually created uh, uh, by Ryan Adele and uh, is being uh, led by uh, Matt Toner, also a uh, uh, a great uh, contact and relationship with the MDM in a past mentor and teacher at the school as well. And, uh, and yeah, we got to work together on doing uh, very cool AR experiences with, with this great assets and, and the story. So um, it was very exciting in a sense that um, uh, 
we worked on an IP that was just about to go out in the summer. And we were just getting our, our, our like uh, ducks in a row to make sure that we would uh, release the, the app just in time for the movie release. So seeing that part of game development was very cool. Like it was very exciting to, to be part of that. But here's the thing, right? While it's exciting, startups and sit situations like that can be really hard. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. It's really rewarding, but it's really hard. So I'm not gonna say uh, I was straight away from this, but like um, uh, through the times when I just started having a family and there's a lot going on, certain thoughts go in your head, right? So uh, I don't like I. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, working at Biba and, and the camaraderie and the, the stuff we achieved. But there was a turning point in my mind where uh, I was like, hey, uh, remember when you said you didn't want to be in games? Uh, try to think about where, where you want to navigate through. So there was this kind of like thinking moment, right? And without getting into too many details, but there was there was like um, some family health related issues, uh, some kind of like personal things that I was going through. So there was a very candid moment where I just like breathe. Where do you want to go? Where where do you try to relate back on your why your why you're doing all this work? Right? And I'll, I'll get to that point about what the why in in, in the end. So thankfully, through this whole journey that you've seen and have gone through so far, it was through the MDM by working as a, um, a faculty supervisor and uh, uh, supervising one of the projects with the clientele that over the years past, I've been presented an opportunity to become a scrum master at Telus Digital. So, while that was uh, building up, I had to make a difficult choice of saying, okay, do I, uh, do I still want to be on this train, uh, making a very cool playground um, apps and AR experiences, or do I want to master my, my skills in agile uh, coaching? And while that was a hard decision, it, I was leaning more onto this because what I figured out was there was, um, in my eyes, at least, an opportunity to, to try to master agile at scale, right? So a lot of, and I didn't have an opportunity to big work again at a big, big company since the UN. So there was a, some kind of hunger in me to try to revisit that. And luckily through actually a reference of um, Anna, who was uh, back then, I was mentoring her as a faculty supervisor and she joined Telus Digital. She advocated for me to, to, to do the internship, or not the internship, sorry, the scrum master position at Telus Digital, right? So an interesting part where going back into, it's kind of spoiler alert, work hard, be kind, and amazing things will happen. It, um, amazing things happened. It's, it's a weird connection. And I'm so happy and thankful for Anna and the support that I've gotten to be able to have this opportunity, the, the, the reference. And uh, now here we are at Tells Digital, huge company. We work uh, as a, a agency for, for Telus is a big organization on, and we're well known for being a bit rough around the edges because we're so fast, right? But this, this really felt like home for me and uh, uh, I've been put in a position to definitely master and, and shine as a, a scrum master or agile coach, right? So whatever I've been doing over the past years in terms of facilitating, doing little things, little projects to help uh, coordinate teams, let them uh, shaping their, their mindset about agility and high performance was really like all that get to the, got to the point where I really found my sweet spot. I'm, I'm, couldn't be happier. But here's the thing. Uh, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, right? It comes with its challenges, but uh, it really still hits my passionate sweet spot, right? Because 
I'll also go uh, toward the end of my lessons learned about why that uh, it really hit my sweet spot. I still do POing at times when there's a gap, so I'm always up for that. But um, but overall, like the culture and the people are also quite central to uh, to why it's it's so much fun there. Like I think. Um, this company is very similar to what I had uh, uh, the experience at Wuga. You have moments where you all meet together and you give each other shout outs, like thank you. Like small, small things like that goes a long way. And you have that from even from the CEO, uh, CDO level and so forth. Not to say that um, uh, other companies don't have that, but for a big scale company like that, taking the time to recognize each other is uh, is a uh, is valuable uh, and i'll say it's valuable for me so here was kind of like fast forwarding is uh i'm uh i'm now in a uh in a position where i can learn more about scaling agile as a big company get to still do a lot of facilitation a lot of coaching um but the big goal is uh, hopefully be part of telus in a success story for Scaled Agile. I think we're pretty good so far right there, uh, but there's still a lot of work to be done and it's never perfect. And I think that's something maybe another takeaway that you have to uh, be comfortable with is that if you're in a position like this, you, uh, reaching for perfection is a great goal, but uh, it's always ongoing. So it's an, an interesting kind of like mindset to kind of go through uh, uh, as, a, as a, let's say a servant leader. Uh, that's how we call ourselves at Scrum Masters. Right, that's a lot of information. Been talking so much. My gosh, it's 1250. So I was just going to run through the, the three takeaways, uh, lessons, and then I'll just open up for questions uh, if anyone has some. So lesson one, remember your why. Find your why and remember it, right? Uh, going back to my story, basketball and team sports was the core influences of my path. So that was an investment well spent still, even though it was, I was like a, a let's say a, an under average a student. But the lessons that I got from that was the camaraderie, really looking out for each other, talking to each other on the floor. Um, even though everything can go perfect, things can change. There's different combinations, right? So um, part of it is that uh, there's no sure shot recipe to create championship teams. I've been kind of like meddling that in my mind, but um, you want to embrace the processes and the framework that will allow people to self-improve. And Scrum and Agile really lend well to that, right? And, and if anyone had a chance to watch the documentary from Michael Jordan and on Netflix or ESPN, The Last Dance, that like really lit up uh, some, some good uh, brain juices in my mind because you, you even see that a superstar team like that go through forming, storming, and norming. They go through trials and tribulations. They push each other. And that really fascinates me, right? So as a coach, you try to find a, a, a good stance on where uh, you want to gently push or really get the team to like um, huddle together and become better, right? And there, like I said, there's no sure shot recipe for it. And I think what I really like from this process is just seeing uh, teams persevere and become better. Um, lesson two, work for it. And when it really gets tough, step back and breathe, right? So you, you've, you've heard it maybe from, from countless of speakers before, is nothing that comes easy, work hard, work hard. I'm all about that for sure. But like there's a, there's a moment when you just get overwhelmed and you burn out. I've been in this situation before, right? So you get confused, like you're doing all this hard work and why not me? Okay. So when it comes to that point, I'll say be kind to yourself, right? Take care of yourself. Mental health is definitely important, right? It, it is, it's, it, there's no sweet, the sweet spot for having that uh, mental health is going to be different for everyone. Everyone has is wired differently. So it's worth kind of like meditating on where that is for you. And, you know, like don't sweat the small things, just, enjoy the people around you enjoy the process around you while you can work hard don't forget to smell the flowers <laughs> right and 
this is an interesting one and I'll, I'll 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 be i'm guilty of it as well like naturally when you when you go through a a journey finding of your from your uh let's say your your career you start comparing yourself to other people and that's natural it's probably the way we were wired right but it's a call out to say never give up right you might be closer than where you think uh don't get hooked up on other people's treasures because you might find something a bigger treasure for yourself that makes you happier right and right like who's to say that your carrot and your 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 treasure isn't as big as what you're rooting for right so it goes back to look out for each other enjoy the journey um, uh, and kind of like spread uh, knowledge and looking out the, and care for each other and as you uh, build your careers, right? Uh, just something to look at. I'll leave this here as a reference. When I say that every person is wired differently, it's this bell curve. This, this, this curve or this chart says stress on the x-axis, performance on the y-axis. So it's finding your middle here that gets you to peak performance. If you're understressed, you'll get bored. You won't perform as well. If you're overstressed, you'll get burnt and you will go haywire, right? So it's a mix of fun, fear, and focus. When I heard about that at the Agile conference uh, last year in Vienna, that was mind-breaking and I, and I shared this as a as a uh, food for thought for for people overall, um, and um, lesson three is treat your career as a business experiment. Right, uh, I'm definitely going over time here, so I'm just going to make this short. Don't sweat again. Don't sweat on the small stuff. Use like a, a a canvas to map out where your value is, and then uh, try to make the match. Right, uh, find out where you were where you are, where you want to be, and see if your value prop matches with the company you want for. And having those tools will give you kind of like a reality check, is, it, is this where you want to go, right? So with that being said, four minutes left, sorry going over time. Hopefully I can, uh, I can just kind of interact with anyone who has, who has questions. All right. Well, thank you so much, Al, and for everyone participating on the call as well. Um, it has been recorded, and I'll try to make it available um, for everyone for their viewing, reviewing um, benefit. Um, but yeah, if there's uh, maybe you want to end the share screen now, and we can pull up a lot of different sure. shows. And if anyone's got a, a burning question while Al's on, on the line, you know, we, we've got the, we got the opportunity here, a few minutes anyway. Um, feel free to unmute your mic if you've got a question for Al. <laughs> yeah, I have a question. Um, hey. Hi. Hi, Al. Um, just wondering about, um, as a someone who's looking into the kind of project management stream or being an Agile Scrum Master, all these things that, um, um, these titles that you're holding, have you found that it was helpful to really get certification in these um, before yeah. taking on the roles? So... So luckily, when I got my when I got my uh, chance at Wuga, I really was banking on the whole kind of like value prop of MDM, uh, working on um, digital projects and my attitude, right? Um, that worked out really well for kind of like a junior product manager, um, and that was my my entry into Scrum Mastery. So maybe another start to, another thing to think about is that. It, it, if you want to get into Scrum Mastery and pro, like project management, it's I would say it's better to have some experience in maybe business analysis or product management to get into Scrum Mastery because then you you've been hands on with dealing with the teams, hands on with priorities. Yes, you, you know how to deal with um, uh, with uh, like uh, conflicting priorities, uh, and then when you go through those motions, if you Step back from the agile framework like you have one PO and scrum master they're separate for a reason so that the PO can focus a lot on like product business priorities and the scrum master on the team 
not many, like a lot of companies are going to mix those two, but like uh, a lot of agilists prefer to separate them because they're quite, they're, they can be quite conflicting, right? So um, I think because uh, I went through product management, uh, I invested into Scrum Mastery. I paid it out of my own pocket, but it helped me like uh, get the respect uh that i i was longing for in order to get uh, to carve out my space as scrum master so i would say it helped right but it, it's not cheap either so see if you can start off as a product manager maybe or uh, or somewhere along that route so that you you can learn the tr tricks of the trade of backlog grooming awesome points and I, i'm going to add to that if you do get into some companies they do have often have um professional development funds, like depending on the organization. Tell us maybe one of those ones that supports ongoing training. I think learning is a lifelong exercise and some employers are more open than others. Um, but I am going to say we're closing in on one. Al, I'm not sure what your timeline's like, but uh, I do. Uh, I'm yeah, going I, ha I have extra time, but like it's up to you. Yeah, I, I know. Say, leave the call. I, I have a question. What's that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh, Great. So anyway, so with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the recording. I'm going to leave it open, though, for you guys, because I have two other meetings personally. But this, I want you guys to go on as long as you have time. Al, feel free to pull the plug when you need to. We, sure. I'm, I'm saying thank uh, you now, just because. If others need to, to dip, you, you, you're free to. But if a few are willing to stick around and chat with Al, I'm going to leave my Zoom window open for a little bit. Um, don't want to end it for any of you early. Thanks again. I'll see you all again at some point. Thank you all. Thank you. Appreciate it. I have, I have until uh, 1.30, but... Uh, all right. Well, uh, I know, but you guys are still on, so I will figure out how to do this without ending it for everyone. I'm, I'm really hopeful that I won't do that accidentally. Al, thank you. Cheers. Always thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Nice to see hey! You. <laughs>